Now I'm going to demonstrate the surgereal bleeding pad. So this is the bleeding pad. It is a five layer pad that has all the similar layers to our other five layer pad. The skin, the subcutaneous tissue, the external fascia, muscle and internal fascia. But inside it has a complex of vessels. Now you can perform your procedures with this flat, but it's a little more challenging to see the vessels. So in a perfect world, you can actually use the tensioning base for this as well. So this is the surgereal tensioning base. And we just take the rubber band off from this because we're going to disassemble it. So rubber band, we're going to take the two pieces, the edge pieces apart. So now we just have the middle part. We're going to go ahead and take the pad now and put it over the top of the middle portion of the tensioning base. Pull that down and then we can use the rubber band that comes with the tensioning base to hold that in. And a second rubber band to hold the other end. So this doesn't hold it really tight, but it does help to hold it in position and will help to open up the vessels a little bit easier for the surgeon to be able to do the procedures. We're going to pull these in. I'm going to tighten them down around the bottom here and here so that we can uh, hold that a little bit tighter. Now we want to attach this to a bleeding supply. So in this case we're using some simulated blood and we're going to attach that using the end of the blood here onto this tube. This is a little challenging to put on, but if you work on it just on one side then to the other, you can get that on. Make sure you feed it on all the way because you don't want that coming apart while you're working. This blood will stain your clothes, so do pay attention to that. We're going to turn the blood on now so that it's ready. Now you can appreciate that the blood started coming into the tube but it won't actually come through until I cut the vessels because it's not primed. Take a scalpel blade and then we're going to get ready to do the incision. So we'll put a little tension on the skin here just to make our incision. We're going to go right in the middle and ideally we're going to practice making our incision just through the skin and now we have a bleeder. So the key to doing this is to identify where the bleeders are coming from and then we're going to identify where the vessels are. So you can see that we have bleeding coming up in this area. We're going to come in with our gauze and put some pressure on that because we need to identify where the vessels are. Work with the hemostat and slowly pull back on the hemostat and the gauze till we can see right where the vessel is. And there's the vessel right there. We've got a nice get grasp of it. And ideally, we're going to get just the vessel. So we don't want to get any other subcutaneous tissues. Now, realizing that the vessel is going to come from both sides, we're going to work to this side. And you can see the vessel now bleeding there. And so we're going to come in and just get the hemostat on that. Now we're going to come back and look and realize that we missed on the first side. So we didn't quite get the vessel there. That's OK. We can see it nicely there edge of the vessel. And now if we use our gauze, we should be able to see that we've completely isolated the bleeding of the vessels. Now we're going to take some suture. In this case, a smaller diameter absorbable would be ideal. And we're going to come around the hemostat itself. And then we're going to use a hand tie. So in this case, we're going to do a one handed tie. We could use an instrument tie as well. Take the suture around and we're going to make sure that we place the loop of the suture down and around the vessel. Just tighten that down, being careful not to over tighten, otherwise it will tear the vessel. Coming through there. So we have four throws square knot on the vessel careful now to come in. We're going to cut these short because they're staying in the abdomen. Now if we've done our job right, when I let go of this, it should have hemostasis. That one looks good. Now we're going to use the other side, coming in again, using a one-handed hand tie. 
key is to make sure the end of the suture goes around the end of the hemostat and around the vessel, not including the hemostat. And this one I'm starting to wonder whether I've got the vessel well or not because I'm getting some hemorrhage. So I have to come back and have another look at that. So we'll come back, put a little tension on here, identify where the vessel is coming, and I think what had happened is that my hemostat came off from the vessel. There, now I've got the vessel, and that's what happens when you're doing hemostasis. In some cases, the vessel will, will you'll lose the vessel from your hemostat, and then you have to come back and, and uh, and get that. Fourth row square knot. Cut those short so that we don't leave any extra suture behind. And when we take the hemostat off, we've got a good closure of the vessels. So then now that we've provided adequate hemostasis, we're going to go in and close. We're going to use a 3-0 nylon material to close the skin in this case. So not only are these pads useful for learning how to ligate vessels, but they're also valuable to learn how to close the tissue layers. So you can go all the way down to the muscle and external fascia. In this case, we've gone just through the skin and we're going to start at the right side of the incision because I'm a right-handed surgeon, work our way to the left. If I were a left-handed surgeon, I would work from the left and go to the right. So we always wanna work from our dominant hand to our non-dominant hand. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and start a continuous pattern, making sure that we get around three to four millimeters from the cut edge of the incision. A straightforward Square knot in this case will be plenty to accomplish this and we will go ahead and get this incision closed. So now to continue this on, we're just gonna make sure that our bites are as even as we can make them from the cut edge as well as along the incision. So we want to be about three to four, uh, maybe five millimeters back from the edge and we're going to go a similar distance, about five millimeters along the, the incision. And that will be our continuous pattern. In this case, because the incision is very close together and there's very little distraction, I can do both sides of the skin at one time. So now we've closed most of the incision and we're getting ready just to finish. When we're doing a continuous pattern, it's important to make sure that you've got even tension along your suture lines as you've been going. And then we're going to put the needle holder in the middle, come around once, tighten that down, making sure to open the jaws of the needle holder to allow the loop to equilibrate. And we're going to work on the other side, making sure we're nice and flat on this, the jaws open to equilibrate the loop. Four throws, and we should be good with closing this. So we've learned how to do hemostasis as well as suturing in this particular instance. And here you see, got a nice closure, fairly good even tension, and we're ready to go.